Hi, I'm Annika Lindner here with the Swedish Startup Sessions and this week's episode we talk to Fredrik Stenbeck of the online monitoring company Silverback in a session on entrepreneurship and really deep how companies should and ought to measure their online success. Stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas the way the heart. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Clear use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all. You ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas. You ain't hard. You ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas. Clear use a G. Please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East or Africa Bet you be thanking God This is This is the Swedish Startup Sessions Hi, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions and I'm here with Felix Stenbeck who is the founder of Silverback and um, Happy to be here Good, good. Uh, we have known each other for quite some time long before you started Silverback actually uh, Tell me a little about yourself, your background uh, background, actually, I'm a former military officer from the beginning, that was a long time ago now, but after that I merged over to um, IT and I mainly worked with um, communication uh, initially, with internal communication and uh, collaboration and productivity, mm -hmm. and after that started to, uh, when the communication started to move between companies and be between people, yeah. it was kind of natural, natural to move in the direction of measuring that as well, uh, as we've been doing with uh, collaboration and productivity yeah, prior yeah. To, to the social media, yeah. uh, started to evolve. And uh, when did you found Silverback? Uh, it started two and a half years ago, I think the, the date is the 9th of November 2009. Oh, that's, the, that's specific. Yeah, that's the formal date that yeah. the company was founded, yeah. uh, although we have been in the progress of building the product for quite a few months before yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, quite a few months before that. So, what does Silverback do? Uh, we are measuring the online success for for companies. Uh, hopefully, success, I would say. <laughs> but we're measuring measuring the online presence, yeah. and not only uh, what is said about companies, but also how they uh, people behave on their own side, and how they can how you can elaborate it or how they correlate to yeah. each other. So you can track if you have a goal that a certain amount of things should happen. You can measure that and also drill down and see what kind of information that builds up to that uh, mm -hmm. KPI or target. Yeah. So you measure social media yeah. and you measure sales. No? Do you measure sales? Uh, yeah, we, we can do yeah. that yeah. Yeah. if that is something and, that and, everybody's tracking. Yeah. Yes. And conversion on the site? It can be yeah. done, definitely. And more kind of specific? Uh, we have an addition that you actually can track news as well. Uh -huh. so it's not a, a part of the base product. No. Probably my be yeah. that is an add-on as it is uh, when we launch the product in the near future. And, and what do you use, what do you include in the expression news? Uh, online news as in the online newspaper, not yeah. the not the paper version and yeah. all the thing. So and not the blogs the, and so on. Not, not in online news, no, that's uh, part of the social media. Yeah. Yeah. So what you also can do is see how, how when you launch for example a press release you can see how that that press release travels from your own sites and to the uh, online news, yeah. uh, press, and then onward to social media or the opposite. Yeah. And also, if, if a significant blogger, for example, picks up the news or, or news, we can see how much how that cor correlates to the actual press release okay. or news yeah. or significant uh, product area on your uh, on your site. Yeah. And also important to say that we don't have a. a um, site measuring tool like Google Analytics, yeah. what we let you do is to integrate yeah. with that tool. Yeah. And then we use that data to create the dashboard where you can measure your, your, your online success. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's, it's easy to find out which um, channel that is most successful and the different projects that are going towards target or that might need some help on the way. Mm -hmm. And in many cases uh, you launch a, a campaign or an overall initiative on a corporate level and 
you don't see how it evolves uh, until it's too late. Yeah. So this is kind of a, of a balance war card, or you can see the gore mm. if it's red or yellow. Or green. Yeah, yeah. You measure like uh, people how uh, how people are are searching products and, and end up on the site. Yeah, like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because that uh, uh, something I found out that very few companies actually have any check on on what what people search for and how they end up. Yeah, and that, that's also interesting to see how if you monitor, for example, keywords in yeah. social media and see how how they match toward the search criteria yeah. that wow. actually end up in traffic to your site. Yeah. So that's also a, a good thing. That yeah. Nice thing here. Yeah. What we're looking on is to, to plug into the internal collaboration as well uh, as a next step. We're not there yet, and we're starting to look in, into that area to measure the, the um, and also to, to find the people that share knowledge and help other people and how much uh, so they can get rewarded or at least get some sp uh, time in the spotlight or the time, the amount of time is saved by decreasing email pressure or uh, whatever it could be. And I know that you have worked really hard with languages because as we know Swed Swedish is a weird language with a lot of dots and yeah. <laughs> circles. <laughs> That's one of the, the well, you can call it a unique selling point for us definitely. We have worked, our engine is completely built from scratch up by us and it's uh, tailored made for social media so we can uh, find a, a language within a tweet with a username and three abbreviations and a link yeah. and we say that this is a Polish tweet, yeah. this is a Turkish tweet or a, or even a Russian or or Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in the, in the, all the different, the serious players in, in, the, in this field, which we consider ourselves one of them, yeah. uh, almost all of them work with the same data. Mm. We can find and collect the same data. It's a, uh, the difference is how you filter that to the user, and that's where language classification is really important. Yeah, and and uh, I, I remember you told me also that that if uh, I would launch a campaign in three or language areas, I can sort of switch simultaneously between them, right? Yeah, in real time, yeah. Yeah. so you can measure one or all or a few yeah. languages, and you can switch between them, and you always get the statistics for that certain language. And now. Now when you have the, the, the uh, how people behave on your own side, you can slice it in regions and languages. So you can, because on your own side it's, you can, it's easy to find where you come from. It's, it's evolving in the social media space as well. As soon as the, the, the services start to release information about where where the people, person who writes a certain thing, where it's located, mm. we're not there yet. Some services does it, but not all of them. Facebook, for example, doesn't lo uh, leave us that data, but Twitter does in, yeah. in certain cases. But it's up to us who actually does tweet and does run our Facebook site uh, or personal Facebook account to say if we want that information to be open. Yeah. We we don't try to find out without permission. Yeah. We follow all the privacy guidelines. I think that's really important. Yeah. So uh, the, the social media monitoring space is quite uh, crowded today. Uh, but what do you, would you say is disruptive with your, your uh, business model and your product? I would say that it, it takes the entire online press presence in consideration yeah. and gives you a, a way to measure your, your success on on, on uh, your entire online presence, mm. and not only in social media, and that's been uh, a strategy for us from the from the early days. Even from the first day we launched, we've had an, an API, so you can you can integrate our, our information in other other tools or products or applications or sites, whatever you can do. Yeah. Uh, because we think that social social media in itself doesn't doesn't do that much good. It's when it's put in context that it's actually yeah. uh, fulfilling something. And, and most of our, or many of our customers, I would say, actually use it like that. Both our partners and our, our customers to integrate it into their solutions. And uh, your business model, how do you make money on this? It's a subscription model. Yeah. 
And is it uh, one for all, or do you have different levels? Uh, we have different levels. It's a kind of a discount ladder. Uh -huh. um, but one important thing is that we think that more the more people that as you use the user tool, the, the more value it is. So you don't pay on a, on a user base. Mm -hmm. You pay on a what we actually do within. Yeah. So it's um, it's kind of straightforward. We try to bundle everything so you get uh, as much as possible included. Uh, in the product, the base product, which we had now for, for a couple of years, uh, there's no difference between the different uh, products. Mm -hmm. It's just a discount ladder, so you yeah. have all the languages, you have all the APIs, everything included in the same product. How many are you working? How, how, big, how big is your team? Four people. Four people, that's a quite a big product for four people. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and it's also it's, it's really funny when you look on the on the back side of the product yeah. because we, we focus a lot on, on if you look at our interface, it's yeah. really easy to use and it's not that complex. And that's one of the things that we're working on. If you use the interface, it should be a low barrier to start to work with. Mm. <coughs> and, but when you turn around and look on the other side, it's, it's almost like an ERP. We handle all the user management, all the invoicing, everything in the same product. We have, have our, our, we monitor the product, so as soon as something goes below or above certain values, we get a notification and then it's starting to treat itself. So it's, it's a really a big, big thing when you look at it yeah, from that yeah. angle. The, the product team is from, from the enterprise space. Yeah. Uh, all of them. So it's not a, the the classical uh, web design person that actually yeah. work. We don't have a graphical UI design. We hire that when yeah. we need that. Um, so they work on the engine, on the database, on the language classification. It's almost the entire product is almost like an uh, integration engine. Mm. It's not a, a web tool. It's yeah. just an integration. Engine. So, so who are your main competitors? Uh, if we look at, at the, the, the product that we had for, for a couple of years and take that um, and not for where we're going, mm -hmm. I would say that it's Radiant 6 is the primary, uh, yeah. the one that we need the most. Um, we have a lot of respect for Radiant 6, it's a great tool. We find ourselves in different, diff kind of different uh, areas. They are really strong on the engagement uh, yeah. part, and you can keep your relation, relationship with the person through the Radiant 6 interface. We don't do that at all. On the other side, we have a lot of, work, a lot of folks on the data, data quality and language yeah. classification. We're not, we're there, not as strong as we are. Yeah. So we, we act in kind of different areas. Uh, when we win uh, towards Radio 6, it's mainly because of the language classification, uh, which they actually lack uh, kind of a lot. They have other other strengths that we don't have, but that's the, the main thing that the companies choose us prior to, to Radio 6. Then. And then I guess you have a lot of big corporations as clients, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Our main, main uh, customer base is, uh, I would say, converted yeah. into three areas. It's uh, agencies. Uh, is uh, partners. We actually have a new new partnership. I think that has been announced uh, when this goes live and yeah. this uh, session. Oh. Uh, a partnership with them where they integrate our our information into their uh, Session Point Global product. And that's really exciting. Uh, and so the partner channel is, is one of them, and the third is definitely the large enterprises. Yeah, yeah. And we have since we have that that is our background. We wanted our product to, to fit into the business processes. Um, so when you online enable the, the business processes, our tool should be really easy to, to fit in that mix. And also that's why we have the, the integration, the API. And we have a widget platform now, uh, and so it's really easy to re only take a snippet of code and paste it in your newsroom or your intranet. Yeah. And, and it sounds like your, your product is coming into a, a mature product. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. When we launched now, uh, two years ago, it was kind of, hey, run and buy a new server. We got a new customer. <laughs> yeah. and, and the end of last year, we put a lot of effort in building a scalable uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we only, as soon as we see that the, the infrastructure is starting to, to get hot, and uh, we only hit the switch and we get a new new uh, extra capacity in our infrastructure. We, everything is done by a web interface. Yeah. So we have a completely uh, load balance.
balanced and scalable infrastructure and that's really comfortable. So the last half year we've been able to focus on our product development and really give back to the customers. Mm. So I, I would agree, it's, it's a mature product. There's still, and, still a lot of things to do. Yeah, but yeah. And, and what's the area that you, if you can say that, that you want to focus on uh, in the coming year or so? It's definitely measuring online. Yeah. The online success for companies definitely. Mm. Uh, companies today are starting to take the online business as serious. It's not a marketing thing only or a communication thing only. It's about the, the entire business being online enabled. Mm. And then you need to track that and see how the business is uh, moving towards the targets. It's the same as you've done with CRM systems and or the ERP systems. You want to have control of your business. And we hope to, to fill a gap there within the online measurement space. Yeah. And um, so, how, how, how are you founded the company? So, is it bootstrapped or do you have investors? Or? Uh, we've founded, founded it ourselves. And initially, it was bootstrapped. And uh, today, we are organic growth. So. You're in the black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are, are you looking for, for investors to take this uh, further, to grow quicker? Uh, what, 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 what markets are you, uh, are you focusing on right now, apart from Sweden? Uh, we're not only present in Sweden, even though we're based out of Sweden, we have customers in, in many countries. Yeah. Uh, not that much in the US, since our language classification has been the, the main driver yeah. for, for other countries like Switzerland, Ukraine, uh, Russia, uh, uh, Holland, uh, yeah, many of the other European friends, France, uh, Germany, Iceland, and so forth, and the Nordic countries, uh, definitely. Um, and now I forgot the question. Um, <laughs> Your presence where you are yeah. in, in the world. <laughs> so, so hopefully uh, we will definitely grow up uh, even more extensively, and yeah. that's uh, when we when we talk about funding or investors. Uh, I think we are in the um, kind of a crossroad where we either continue to grow organically or we. Um, Join effort with an investor to boost because it's the uh, the sales effort that that really takes the time, yeah. and it's uh, it's only me who actually mm. does the selling, mm. uh, and I have all the the um, the input from the market and yeah. the, the um, demand on the product. And that's entire outside running the actual mm. business. So uh, that's definitely what we want to focus on, and that. In that case, an investor can definitely, if it's the right investor, yeah. uh, boost that. Yeah. So it's uh, we don't exclude it, we don't look uh, at it actively. Uh, but if we find a partner that would like to uh, have the knowledge and interest and uh, think we are the right partner to invest in, the right company to invest in, we don't see that as... Uh, You're welcome. Absolutely. So, well, <laughs> talk to Frederick about <laughs> investing yeah. in your company. Uh, My email is frederick at silverback.com. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that, we get the link. Um, so, what, what do you say is the most important thing you have learned during your startup uh, journey, especially since you have this military background, you have the enterprise background, and startups is a quite different animal. Definitely, and uh, even after the, the, I left the military, I worked with uh, large corporations. Uh, so it's, it's definitely been a, an interesting road. Uh, I would say that the main thing is is to be flexible mm -hmm. and listen and see where. It, one thing is where you're going with your product and keep yeah. focus on that, but also be uh, flexible to the demand. Uh, don't divide from, the, from where you're going, trust your instinct, but also be flexible in inputs. Yeah. And that has been kind of tricky for me as a person, since I'm a military officer, I see the goal and I, I just move <laughs> straight ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, that was actually a challenge for me even when I was in the military, yeah. so I'm really this is square person. And so that's, uh, I've had a lot of knowledge in that space. Mm and also don't to get stuck mm. uh, it's really easy to get stuck and, and focus on what you have in front of you instead of looking uh, forward yeah and the big picture uh, yeah definitely and that's quite and, the and then the, the, the team yeah it's really uh, and even though I'm the one who's sit, sit, sitting here right now it's it's a team effort mm. you need to, to argue a lot with your colleagues and put everything on on, uh, on the 
spot and see mm-hmm. if this, this, this is the right way. I mean, many, in, I hope many, in many ways you disagree. Mm-hmm. You have to argue a lot. I think that's when you really achieve things. Silence is unhealthy. Definitely. Yeah, and and since the you have water starts to smell. <laughs> <laughs> and since since uh, you have also this uh, big enterprise background, what do you think that a big corporation can learn from from your startup experience, or the lesson advice you would give to them? I think many many large organizations often stuck in the they, they get stuck in the internal internal mm-hmm. uh, obstacles and they see obstacles internally when there actually aren't mm-hmm. and so it's the, the moving ahead and keep uh, keep looking at the goal and uh, keep focusing on the customer. I would say that's the, the, that's the absolutely most fun thing with with a startup is that you have so such a complete focus on the customer. Yeah, uh, and you have the time because you don't have the Internal, internal meetings, you don't have the internal uh, email, uh, the CC uh, horror, yeah. uh, you can focus on the product and the customer. Yeah. So, um, any final words, anything you, you like to share with us? I think it's, it's really interesting times and it's really fun to see that how, how companies starting to take online really serious. Mm-hmm and see how the, the marketing departments and the communication departments start to see the value of actually getting the entire business mm-hmm. online enabled. So I see a, a like, like uh, Eric Schmidt said from Google that internet is a platform today. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's the same with, with social. Mm-hmm. Social is a part of the infrastructure today. With, I, think, I hope that we start to t- stop to talk about social media and talk about the internet or online. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the uh, what we can do today online is in many cases the same as we can do as we can do when we sit and talk. Yeah. Uh, except the body language and the the face, uh, mm. uh, how, you, how you behave. Uh, but you can start. You can build a relationship. You can uh, keep a relationship. Uh, that is something that that's part of the infrastructure today. So it's it's the same. It's a relationship. It's trust. But you also have the platform today, the technology platforms that we really need to learn the benefits of using. And what would you say? Uh, what do you think about the Swedish startup scene? Do you feel a part of that, or you you're a, a bit geographically removed from the hotspots? But uh, <laughs> even though I actually am in Stockholm, I would say at least yeah. three days a week nowadays. Yeah. So. And I think it's it's an interesting space. We have a lot of uh, the talent, a huge amount of talent. I would say both from coming from the universities and high schools like KTH and Chalmers and others as well. And I think we have a, a kind of a government problem how these things get funded, yeah. uh, and also a mindset thing uh, how we look at our market. Uh, we need to think bigger. The, the companies that actually succeed are the ones who say, okay, let's take over the world. Yeah. And we are kind of a modest, it's the classic uh, the log yeah. that we have in Swedish. You can look that up on Wikipedia, it's really funny. <laughs> Uh, and we have this mindset, uh, especially in, in some of the Nordic countries, that it's it's ugly to succeed yeah. because if you have money, you, you derive from from the rest. And it's the, the most I would say the, the most definite uh, the negative thing is that it's uh, ugly to uh, to fail. Yeah, uh, it's not considered a good thing that you fail and learn something and bring that with you to the next. Uh, thing that you are doing mm-hmm. and so that's uh, I would say that's the two things that are stopping us as persons yeah. we need to be a, a bit more like Slatan our <laughs> national football hero yeah so good luck to you you won't fail and be like Slatan exactly <laughs> thank you thank you